Hey guys, Harry here. Back again with another Brick Lane vlog, finally. Um, it's Tuesday today. It's the uh, first day of work this week. Uh, basically, Monday, complete washout. We had uh, we had a bit of uh, hassle in the, on Monday morning. I had to take the cat to the vets. And uh, we had an appointment that we're, we'd had booked in for ages, but I just completely forgot. And then... I'd have tried to come in at 11 and have a go, no chance, the rain was at this side of Yorkshire where I was, it was um, it wasn't in Doncaster but it was where I worked in Castleford, and then on uh, on Tuesday we had another another emergency appointment with the vets again, turned out I forgot to book in the cats to get uh, spaded and castrated. So they don't end up, we've got a boy, we've got a new little kit, two kittens we've had for quite a number of months now, six months, and I'd forgot to book them in. So we'd, it's a boy and a girl, so we didn't want kittens, <laughs> literally. So uh, again, so now we uh, uh, had to do that. So we'd, I didn't get getting started till about 10:30 this morning on his first day. So we'd already lost a full day, and then I, let, I left Dean loaded out on the Monday um, while we were at the vets. I said I needed to load up in front, there was some tidying up that needed doing. Uh, gaffer that's on here at the moment, he's painting ass, and he's uh, been up with level on all his work and stuff, and wants everything tidy as fuck, and it's just picking fault with literally nothing, so I had to go and talk to him about all that. Luckily we don't have to take anything down, because there's nothing wrong with it. I said I'd go around every inch of my plot with level if you want, and then uh, he soon realised that I won't be how I'm being serious. So yeah, been a bit of a mess about this week, but finally got started on the on plot. Net. So obviously this is as plot you can see in the background. And then obviously we're on the one next to it. It's basically the identical house, um, except it's got one less set, one less window per house. So there's, there's only one little window instead of. Uh, a big one, a big one and a little one, and I think the gables are slightly smaller, I think it's slightly smaller, um, I don't know if it's in width or length, but it just feels a little bit smaller, and if you can notice at the back of this wall here, no radon barriers anymore, you can see the bare block work there at the first course, it's trimmed back the visqueen, insulation out and we're away, nice like 450, you know, I think it's 300, 450 drop zone there, um, back, I've not been on housing, with drop zone since 2014 it's been trays ever since about 2014 2015 they've had trays everywhere every site I've been on radon barriers all the way around bottom and now it's just a nice little stripper bit of stripper 450 over as uh, over as uh, air bricks and then you know two two strips of four inch nice open 120 130 cavity you know nice and easy nice easy to keep clean as well especially with a drop zone uh, so yeah, I love it, I love, you know, to be quite honest, it's been a pleasure building this gable without them bloody trays, you forget how stressful housing is when you've got that radon barrier all the way around the bottom, and especially when it's open cavity, um, it's something you don't see a lot of guys on YouTube doing to be honest, you don't see a lot of open cavity because it is kills you, it kills your, uh, kills your money when you're uh, having to maintain cavity maintenance all the time so if you'll notice if you watch Changi watch uh, you uh, Collison and uh, even uh, even uh, Tricky Bricky a lot of the get sites they work on it's either full fill insulation or it's no ra no radon barrier or it's uh, radon barrier and full fill insulation so obviously that cancels out any of your cavity maintenance Cavity maintenance is a fucking most ball aching, stressful thing about house building. Um, but if you can get on sites where it's just a traditional drop zone, I prefer an open cavity. I don't like to fuck about with insulation. It, uh, Kingspan, you know, fuck that. We did that years ago when I was an apprentice, and I, I, I hate taping Kingspan. I, I, I'm, I'm against it. I hate, I hate uh, tie wire clips because you've got to put your block work up first and insulation, then red stupid little clip things it always pulls your block work cover pulls your ties out terrible so um so happy that they've actually gone through with no no radon barrier now made this build completely transformed it in fact um i know they still don't like me doing brickwork first but i said to them matter of time we're gonna lose with weather uh it, you know the area we're in it isn't a very 
it's not a, it's like a low lying area so it, it does get a bit of rain but it's not in any valleys or anything so it's not in like hot spots for rain so you know we should be all right and it just gives us a good day's work or two bashing some gables up and some you know some thermalite work in the wet you know if we need to so that's why i'm doing still brickwork first also same brick again another ball like about uh the only downside, the only downside, I do like these soft yellows that go in between on a banding course, but these bricks, they look horrible. They take some, uh, take some looking after to keep clean, so we're, we're, I'm being a bit more conscious with that. Also, reveals, I've been, they've been picking up on reveals with belly and brickwork and stuff, so everything gets the level chucked up it now. Even when I've built it with profiles, check every reveal with a level. It's a bit of a nightmare to do, but once it's gone off a little bit, you can nudge it into place. I've found with these concrete, so if anyone who's on site at the moment who are having struggles with these concrete bricks, you can take them up 21, 22 in a full day, easy, but just make sure when it all starts hardening off on a night, when, especially more, this is probably more accustomed to, you know, silo gear, but uh, especially with ready mix as well, which we're, um, we're on, unfortunately. Well, I say unfortunately, I do prefer ready mix. I hate silos, they always break. But, um, you know, just bang a level up all your reveals, just pull everything nice and tight and, you know, take away any, any curvature away from it. Because I know this is what a lot of these gaffers are keen on now. This one hopefully is going to be leaving soon because it's a pain in my ass. But, um, you know, it's just not, it's just stressful having to put, having to walk around every house with a level when there's nothing wrong with it, you know what I mean? I'm confident in my work to say that there's no wrong with it, and uh, it's just been a bit of a thorn in my side in the last uh, last few last few weeks. Uh, but we've not had to take any down anything down as such. Uh, just an odd couple of bricks on a couple of corners, had to straighten up. But I'm now getting over that issue with just checking everything with level now, so that's what I'm doing. Um, but apart from that. Um, my new plan, my new plan, uh, if a lot of guys have criticised this in the comments on my YouTube videos, is loading out, get everyone loading out, and this is one thing that I wasn't always too keen on, I was trying to get everyone some trial time, but now everyone knows what they're doing, I can leave everyone to load out, my new plan is everything loaded out, uh, even if I'm building a majority of the first gable on me on my own, or just with the missus looking after me. Um, we're getting, I'm getting Dean loading out everything, I'm, and I mean everything like every, all thermalites to, you know, enough thermalite box for everything to fall out. Middle walls, the job lot, so then everyone can get on the trial at, at the same time. Because um, I find it's a lot faster when there's three of us. We get through a lot more work when there's three of us on the line than if there's just two and then one loading. So I'm trying to get all loading done in advance. Um, it gets his name on everything. Like luckily, I, I paid Dean half a day to load this up. Um, a couple of times, you know, there's been a, basically a couple of mornings I've paid him to just load up. I know it's only for a few hours uh, before I get here, um, but it's got his name on this house because there are a few lads we know to do because of bad organisation at site. And um, and uh, basically, this would have been took off us if I didn't get this loaded, pre you know, preemptively. And um, you know, bonus of having two labourers or one one labourer and one part-time labourer. Is right, sending in cleaning out pots. We had to clean out one of his other houses for joiner. Um, even though like we're already really clean, it was just full of shit that wasn't ours. Uh, but we uh, we tidied that right at the centre for labourers to pick up, and it was just stuff that it's a lot easier if I don't have to do it myself. And if I'm if I can send someone to do it, it's easier. It saves you a lot of time. Cavity cleaning, sending cavity cleaning if he needs doing that now. Uh, but it takes a lot of train, a lot of you know, getting someone on board to do it and making sure they're doing it right and stuff. I did a good, did a good job of getting set out with these bricks. I didn't even know he'd loaded most of this brick work um, and block work because we'd just been doing it when we had a spare minute, spare hour or so. So made good progress there. And I know there's only probably another full day loading uh, for Mel and Dean uh, or just Dean, and then we should be sort of everything should be there ready to go. Uh, this. This build will go a lot faster because of this lack of, lack of radon barrier, so it's been good. Um, but still, I'm trying to mix up a bit of head cam, a bit of phone. Um, you can see here, still picking, dipping. 
um, long spread and um, showing you guys the utilization of the, the nine inch blade a lot easier As you can see it works through the gobble a lot better um, look at that put it putting the perpons easier you just don't touch the line getting gobbo snagged on the line and we had a bit of shit gobbo in the morning and then we got a, a tub of nice stuff and it was just so easy to work with even with a rough gear same again there look boom straight on uh, whereas a big blade it, it, it hit all them tie wires that's one thing i want to emphasize it's just you can get it into spaces where you know with a big blade you're a bit clumsier so even though i do love watching brickwork fundamentals with his big 11 inch blade blasting pick and dipping it looks really good but i just i'm going to stick with this little spoon um <laughs> I've had a few guys, I'll just have a drink of my beer, hold on. I've had a few guys mentioning the wide Londons for the W Rose. Do plan on getting one to be honest. Um so I do I do like the wider trowel to be quite honest, but after using this it's just been a breath of fresh air. You, you can see full joints every time they're not picking dip with this little one. Just because I find I'm getting me spread in the right areas. Obviously, you know, experience comes down to it. I've been doing pick and dip now since April. And uh, you know we're almost at the end of the year now, so January, February, March. So yeah, I'm coming up to eight months really doing pick and dip. Uh, seven and a half month, eight month. You know, in another seven and a half, eight month, I'll be probably better at it. You know, but I do still think anyone who's laying these concretes out there at the moment, get pick and dipping and long spread. You know, it's um, probably the only way to lay them effectively because you try lay the. You would not see me laying these traditional with grooves in me spread and all that I just it, they don't lay very well traditional I've, I've, I've really got to say like you've seen me do a few videos on the garage I think quite a few months ago and I was doing all traditional front tip um, no grooves but you know traditional nevertheless and these bricks just don't lay very well traditional I've found I, I don't know what it is or why it is but it, it, they just benefit so much for from that full bed that full bed underneath them you start putting grooves in them and they just want to move they just want to move so um that's one thing i'll say for pick and dip on these is the very it's very very it's probably the best way to lay them because i took this up in a full day i've done a big corner as you can see I'm, you'll, you'll see it's run most of the gable i've run probably two thirds of the gable in on a big corner i basically stayed about a meter back from me at one meter back from the meter boxes uh, so that probably from, from my calculation I've left my sending maybe like three or four meters at length of brickwork left to running on the front and I'm just finding it splits it in half nicely a bit more than half to be honest because you know I've, I've always been one for you know obviously corners and stuff but I find you need if you take it up if you don't run enough out with these uh, these concretes they don't tend to you know hold very well tend to want to rock about so I'm trying to you know sort of lengthen my runs a bit to be honest with these you know instead of running a full gable in you know which can take it can be a bit daunting you know you feel like you're getting nowhere doing that taking two-thirds of a gable a lot easier a lot easier and then now especially it just snaps everything in half you know what I mean so now when I'm set up on the on the front now obviously after this after this day I'm all set up ready for the front half and that'll go up just as quick, you know, if not quicker to be quite honest, because there's less profiles to move. So you're only moving, you know, uh, two corners as, as opposed to one, as opposed to three. Obviously, obviously we're fits bricking it all the way up and stuff. So, so yeah, um, that's about it for really, you know, still sticking to the plan brickwork first as always. I, I find it just, I find it easy, you know, when you're trying to get, you ain't got to, worry about your gauge you follow your brick work and everything stays within 10 or 15 mil and you don't have to do any silly pickups then when you get to you know wind red height so got a good couple of you know got probably at least on these on these two plots we've probably got three weeks so work three you know a week to square each one of them up roughly you know given we might lose a day probably i'm, I'm basing everything on a four day week uh so you know Two weeks to get this round, you know, eight days, basing it on a four-day week again, obviously, because it's some winter. I always try to do that. And then, obviously, you know, we've got a good month's work in front of us here um, before we have to move away from these two. Um, so I'm happy about that. I'm happy about that. I'm just, everything's to hand. And then, hopefully, I'd like to get on a yellow house, but, 
you know, just a change of brick, a change of scenery, but I don't mind laying these, you know, I'm, I'm getting better at laying them a bit quicker every time. You can see there, I'm spreading for two bricks with this 9 inch anyway. 9 inch trial, you see me long, long spreading it out. Um, but yeah, but yeah, that's uh, that's the video today. Um, I'm not quite sure of what topic to talk about. I'll just sort of mention who I've been watching on YouTube recently. Uh, bit, a big fan of Izzy. Is he the bricklayer or the, is he the bricky? Isaac. Uh, I think I've pronounced that wrong, but you know, I've been watching a lot of his private jobs. It's quite interesting watching the private stuff. I've been looking a bit more. I've been watching uh, a guy from Australia called Hendos Bricklaying. And um, I thought it was like Spanish or something at first or Mexican because Hendos sounds, you know, that way on. But he's, a, he's an Australian bricklayer. I just find it quite fascinating, you know, how they knock all the gear up, the sends in a mixer, and you know, I, obviously, I've not done, ex I've not done really any private work of any sort of, you know, quantity, and like, you know, I can, I can put a mix in in a mixer, but it'd be shit. I won't be able to do a very good mix, and uh, I've always worked on sites, to be honest, which, you know, has its, has its pluses, has its minuses. I wouldn't like to carry the amount of gear around that you would have to for private work, personally. I know, like, I don't own a van. I don't own a fucking car to my actual name. It's my miss It's the missus who technically owns it, even though I pay for it. You know, I hate driving, which you'd have to drive all over quoting jobs. This is why site work really suits me. You know, just having a load of work in front of us, can work as long as we want. Like, especially on this site, we could just we leave a bit of Irish fencing up and then just lock it end at night when you want to leave. Like... Obviously, it's getting dark by 4 o'clock now, 4.30, so we're not really working much longer than 4, um, which I prefer in winter. Like, you know, when when you start working daft hours in summer, like I've been known to, y you don't actually achieve much because you, you start overworking one day and then the production is down the next day. So you, it's it comes back to that sort of, you know, physical stress management, mental stress management, it all affects you. You're speed texting it when you're doing hours like that as well. You're not on it. Whereas at the moment, I've been trying to work through. Because um, I've, I've, I've lost about 2 kilo. Uh, about 117 now. But down from about 121. About, what's, you know, about 3 or 4 kilo. And that I've been I've been sort of fasting uh, straight through. Or working straight through. Not really going for a snap and a sit down. Just a little, little snack, little scoff to keep me going. And then working through. Because I've been starting a bit later. Uh, his, his average start time is probably quarter past eight now, so I'm the I'm, a, I'm the official after eight bricky, and I find working through we can get packed up and all ready to go by quarter to four if we work through, um, or I get one of lads to bring me a snap. So if or the misses one of the lads, uh, <laughs> um, either got, I got Dean to bring me my snap today um, because we go for a beer we go for a beer and a breakfast on or a shandy and a breakfast on a Friday so. We know. I normally I'll just pay him back for it then. But I normally either work through on a Friday and we go out like an hour earlier, um, or if there's all three of us, we do have to work, you know, till at least three thirty because there's a lot more wages. But you know, I've I've started to work through. I'm trying. To, I'm experimenting at the moment. I've you know I'm coping quite well working through. I find I get a bit more done. Like I got this this half a gable up for light. Which I didn't think I'd get done considering I, I started flat start, no profile set up, no nothing, no no motorboard stand set up, no nothing, just bricks there at half ten. And I banged it and I got, you know, full eye cut, full eye half a gable corner up. Um, which, isn't, which isn't the same as doing, you know, just a 22 course corner, you know, tailing out just 12 bricks. I was tailing out, you know, 25, 26 bricks, like a re-elongated corner. Uh, because there's no movement joints in this, this is just you know movement joint between the two semis. So that's that's what I've been doing. Um, I do find you have a bit more energy, you know, not having that not having that break to wandering away from work. You know, it, I don't know. It's one of them. I, I, I saw seen a few people do it to be honest. A few Britlays over the years to it. I know Charlie Collison starts doing it. Has been doing it for fucking donkeys. I've had no no to eat, no snap. And, you know, it has its merits, has its, you know, downsides, but he's one of them. Also, little tip, little tip of the day uh, on the on these oversailing bricks. 
what I've been doing, um, I've been, uh, you know, I like to tap them with the heel of my trowel actually now, instead of rubbing them, because uh, these obviously, because they're dry, they tend to try and bend that, move that top course of concrete, so you'll see in a minute when I go to um, lay them, I, I, I try and tap them, tap them with the heel of my trowel, you'll see me do it, because sometimes I can get them scraped down in one go, but I find a nice tap on the top, it, uh, it makes it so they don't end up lipping, I end up getting them sometimes where they lip a bit and that's what they're looking for so I'm trying to tap them on the top make sure they're nice seating for them look for that flush top joint as well like you see the top of my perk where I'm sort of cutting off the excess just at the top there I'll look for that being level and flush all the way along stops so you getting that tipping effect you know there's some bit layers I know out there will put level on boat level on every one of these but that's just unnecessary that's just you know that's not necessary at all and um and you know, just look for that level face. A bit like when you're doing your block work, when you're plumbing, you know, your first course of block. You just look for that level face, look for everything cutting flush. And I like to focus on the bottom end of me, of me of a sailor as well, you know. And these are vant houses which we're building, that they seem to be sort of universal, they're all using these over sailors. So, you know, I find that they're very easy to lay like that. Obviously the fixed brick has a massive, you know, is a massive um, time saver. Because normally you'd be cutting an half brick, it, the line would be twanging about and it just isn't a stable working platform. Um, you know, they, they are wanting these 50, set about 15 mil out. I think I'm doing them about 12 and a half now. Just to be able, just to be, just makes life a little bit easier. If you start oversailing your bricks too much, it creates a weakness in your gable. I know they were, they were wanting by spec of 15 mil oversail, but 12 and a half, it gives you that extra couple of mil to just keep your bricks a bit more sturdy I think I've seen I think I've seen Derby Brickwork I quote these a lot because I think they're the biggest price gang I know on YouTube will build the vant houses similar to our basically very similar to what I'm building and uh, I think they only have a sale on 10 mil I'm going to leave him a comment uh, in the uh, on the YouTube and see what they actually what their, their, their gang actually have a sales them because if you put depends how you point them you can make them look like a different level of valve sailing like now I'm using I use the small <coughs> the small of the big barrels on the on tech jointer whereas if you use an even smaller one you could probably get away with making it look an even bigger oversail uh, if you use the smaller set of barrels which I've started to do on block work uh, I don't think any, if anyone's picked up on this <coughs> if you use the smallest barrel you can get for a barrel jointer on a thermalite you can what, what a lot of guys sort of do is if you're using too big a lot of guys use a big jointer but it leaves a lot of voids in your in your block work especially when you point it back but if you leave the small one especially on a lot of thermalites you can get right deep into that joint and some almost give it like a recess effect but it gives it a more full full joint effect than using a big jointer on them so um you'll see i think you see i think i know uh i know charlie collison i've seen do it before but i know another bricky told me about that years ago to use a small small pointer on block work and it gives your joints the effect of being a bit smaller all the time looks a bit neater because uh, I did the same thing on stone uh, a stone bricklayer uh, old guy who's just just built stone exclusively he were telling me that nice tight perps and if you get the same effect on block work it looks a lot nicer as well so and it just looks more pleasing to eye so I'm going to start using the tiny the tiny little joint that you use for pointing those wires on the block work it, you know, if you make sure your joints are alright, you know, it shouldn't make them look too bad at all. Um, you're sort of treating your block work a bit like stone then. I think you, c you can get away with not having to joint them as much, you know what I mean? Adding gobbo to your, your joints on block work. And then here again, I'm doing sort of like a hurl and propel style two, pick two brick pick and dip. So I'll spread for two, lay two on these, on these dry bricks. Um, obviously, I'm... I'm not as spoiled. I'm not spoiled enough to be laying proper clay bricks at the moment. So, you know, this is how I'd be laying bricks normally if these were proper bricks. But obviously, being concrete, you know, I'm sort of exclusively long spreading at the moment. Um, don't really make much sense doing, you know, single brick pick and dip on these because they are so wet. You'll see even mine have been covered up with brick jackets, but there's little puddles on the face of them and everything. So, they've. Um, same thing here again, heel at trowel, tapping that, that, that these joints nice and flush. 
Uh, you don't want to be rubbing a lot of the time. If you start rubbing your bricks on top of these other sailors, you get some real rock effect. You know, the bricks start rolling with the punches and then you, this is where you can have gables go on you. So really emphasise on the dry courses, just tap. Just tap the top of them. Um, you know, if you, if you don't get it right to press right to place in the first course you see me doing here, right, I'll press, I'll slide it in. And if it doesn't press to the mark, you see, just get a little tap home with me, with me heel and my trowel. I don't like to use the blade a lot of the time as well because you'll you see guys with the bigger trowels slapping the blade on the block, slapping the blade on the bricks. You can't do that with small bladed trowels. Use twice your heel. I, th I find you have a lot more control tapping with your heel and not your uh, your blade. I know I know people try to preserve their handles, but that's what they're for. You can always rehandle your trowel if you if you if your handle gets knackered. Uh, so yeah, heal your trowel. Um, I was teaching Dean to traditional way today, like a traditional spread, which he found very hard. And I said, this is why I teach you a no groove spread at the moment, uh, because it's easy for beginners. But the traditional method, there's more you can get mess, mess up. You know, your spread can be all over if you're trying a traditional spread, putting grooves in and Vs. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been working on uh, with him. Uh, it did some spreading this morning, but because of how late we started, I've lost my time to teach him today. It did, we did a bit of spreading, but it, it does distract me because he does ask a lot of questions, and I said to him all the time, I can't always stand and show you. You know, I don't always have the time, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start making time um, by him getting loaded out in front. If he if he never has to, you know, uh, go and load out in front because it's already done, he has more time to stand and ask questions. And I can show him a thing or two, you know, without taking me off the build, um, you know, which is beneficial to him, you know. My plan is, uh, moving forward, which I've, which I've said to Dean, is everyone hold out in front and then um, he starts laying from one end like I got him doing on the other plot. And, uh, and then I, all I'm doing then is, you know, checking his six, seven bricks that he lays or whatever. Um, which, because he is, you know, he can lay bricks pretty well. He just needs, a, you know, to be kept on top of, and he needs more practice doing it. Like he lost a lot of his spreading, uh, his spreading technique and skill this week. We're having like a week off at trowel, just pure odd carrying, you know, because of weather and stuff. And block work, it's teaching a novice to lay thermites is a fucking nightmare. So, you know, um, you know, they can, especially with these with these top lights, you get eye on gauge really easy. So it's hard to teach a you know, especially with these these pairs, there's not a lot of big long runs on the block work. It's only your gables, and they go up so quick anyway. With three of us, it um, and then it's all pillar work really back and front. So it's only middle walls I can get him doing a bit of block laying, and um, it depends as well. It's harder in winter to teach novices because you're sort of trying to get most you can do on the good days. So you haven't really got time to mess about. But you know, I'm getting there with him. You know, he's learning a little bit bit by bit. So probably tomorrow, because he's loaded up brickwork out, I'll get him to load all heavy walls out in the morning. Um, because a lot of a lot of time, what Dean won't understand as well, when it's low level with these concretes, you've really got to get them first couple of course cock on with your damp, because there's two sets of four inch damp. One four inch damp, obviously at DPC level, and then a one 150 IF, like a splash, like a splash sort of thing. Um, and that, laying bricks on top of damp or showing him to spread on top of damp's a nightmare. Um, so when we get when we get like six course up, or you know, when we get them first few course all perp set out, then he can get laying. So that's me. That's my plan tomorrow. Every every box in morning, you know, load a couple of those, you know, a couple of packs of them out, and then get on trowel, and uh, just take turns with the misses then, because she'll be doing a bit of bit of uh, hog carrying. And basically, her job's going to be exclusively pointing at the end, at day. While Dean, me and Dean carry on, uh, carry on getting everything ready and uh, move everything about. So we'll be moving to the other gable at probably you know dinner time ish tomorrow. Uh, so we'll be doing that because it makes more sense just one pointing than two pointing because they tend you know when two people get together pointing, you get tend to chat, slow down. They don't because you know the. You, go, you know, they point it a bit quicker, but it's, it's only always beneficial just having one point that I've found at the moment. So, um, you know, it's uh, you know, it's a one-person job, really. And, and I made sure as well, I made sure to point these yellows as well uh, as I was laying them. So, obviously, I did about two more course on top because they were wet. 
and then I pointed them and that takes a lot of work away. I've left the yellows for the for them to, to point before and it takes them ages trying to get a joint under them under them over sail it takes them ages and they can't do the, the over sail perps as well. The joints keep dropping out of them. Um, you know, it's a bit difficult for them so We've been trying to joint everything as we go, um, not leaving any reveals to point like I did on the other one, that was a bit of a, an error. Um, not leaving, just not leaving any jointing really. You can see on some of the corner bricks of, on his oversells there's some pointing around to do. I'm going to try to leave this one snag free. Um, I think I've still got a few, couple of briquettes to slide in up front at other plot, but I'll do that on a rainy day. I'm just nipping under the trad deck and shove them in. Um, just before we finish this one, I think. So yeah, that's uh, that is that basically. Um, we're coming towards his last clip end of us. We've got one more run through, and that's about it on for us on this uh, for this video. Hope you've enjoyed me a little bit of uh, methodology about this build, how everything's going. Um, got some more footage tomorrow. Obviously, you'll see another video tomorrow or day after, probably the same footage. But I'm trying to. I think tomorrow I'm gonna film everything with my phone tomorrow. I'm going to have one day head cam, one day phone and you'll probably just get updates you know throughout the day. Other little tip as well, tie wire behind the profile, keep it plumb. I had about three tie wires in here periodically up it, up it and I got a good finish. If you just make sure you put your level up after it and then it, it, it that makes a lot neater job. And, you know checking everything with a level post, post build with these concretes especially even with clay bricks I do the same so um, only downside to steels obviously you need to check it check on wheel level afterwards but you know um, you know keeping on top of everything there making sure everything's plumb um, but yeah so probably one day I'd cam one day phone obviously taking in me and my tripod it, I can set tripod a lot easier up and get some good angles for you guys and I'll, I want to get some third person brick laying instead of first person all the time it, it just gives everyone a little bit more of a different a different view of it all so so yeah anyway guys thank you very much for watching this video um, if you enjoyed it please remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you're notified of every brick lane vlog that comes out um, if you get, hit the like button if you enjoyed it, it helps the algorithm spread it about and uh, recommend it to more people so we can uh, we can grow the channel a little bit one day at a time and um, if there's anything you want me to, any topics you want me to talk about in the next video, just leave us a comment. Um, I know people have been waiting for this booking in video. Uh, now I have got a tripod and stuff set up, I will be doing like a detailed how I book in and stuff and how to do a, a proper invoice. Um, I know everyone, a lot of guys who are wanting to go on price are wanting them to know this because it is very important. Um, but it's just, it's me trying to find a way to make the video that will make it a good video um, instead of it just being you know a bit of hearsay on the voice of us you know so I want to make it really easy to understand and this will probably save a lot of people a lot of headache and a lot of money and uh, make people a lot of money if they know how to do it right because you know it's no worse than booking him wrong and not getting paid right uh, so yeah um, yeah just look forward to that video coming up in a few weeks um, obviously I've been busy this week with cats so I'm not going to be really doing any uh, any like um, uh, you know face-to-face -face videos you know in house this week but it'll just be work videos uh, and then I'll do a, a bit of a I'll try to do a, I might do an in-depth picking bit video again um, with a small blade but I think I've said everything I can say about it at the moment um, there's a few nuances um, that I'm, I'll probably come to me one day when I'm laying and I'll just think of a topic to talk about but yeah, if you enjoyed videos, you know, leave us a comment. Let us know if you what you liked about it and if you what you think I could improve on for upcoming videos. Um, I do want to do some sort of site check-ins as well, but I think everyone seems to do that now. So I'm trying to bring my own little spin on the Brit Lane, on the YouTube Brit Lane scene. Um, you know. So yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, and uh, I will see you guys in a day or so with the next one.